Welcome everyone to GamerMelt. Today I've got a ton of news to cover, but with Computex to prepare for, I figured I would do it this way. Regardless, today we have Meteor Lake, a 3D AMD CPU, more Ryzen 6000 specs, Valve is making a Nintendo Switch, and Nvidia teases the RTX 3080 Ti and 3070 Ti, which we know is going to be released very soon. And when I say released in quotes, I think you all know what I mean. We're talking paper launches, which is why I am revealing my new paper launch GamerMeld t-shirt. You can get your own at store.gamermeld.com. You can see it right here. We have the paper launch t-shirt. And basically what this is, this just lets AMD and Nvidia know that you're sick and tired of them continuing to release more GPUs that basically no one can buy. And this just kind of puts it on display, I guess you could say, just saying, hey, I was part of the time where all these companies released these GPUs that no one could buy. So they weren't really a release, they were just on paper. But anyway, with that said, let's get right to the news. Starting off with Intel's Meteor Lake CPUs. Now, for those who don't know, Intel's Meteor Lake is their upcoming non-monolithic, so very similar to, say, AMD Zen processors that's built on their newest Favaros technology. Now, as you can see right here, Greg Bryant from Intel officially announced that they're actually taping in their 7 nanometer Meteor Lake compute tile right now. And of course, if you haven't heard of Meteor Lake, that is understandable because that's technically their 14th Gen Core series. So it's after Raptor Lake, which is after Alder Lake. So it is a little while from now, but it really shows that Intel is getting on the ball here and taking things seriously, moving down in nodes, and just prepping better and better processors rather than staying on 14 nanometers for eternity. And next up for today, we have Milan X. Now, for those who don't know, Milan is uh, AMD's next generation Epic processors, and the X is really the interesting part here because it actually claims, let me actually go to the report. This was originally from Patrick Schur and then essentially confirmed by the leaker executable fix. So as you can see, we obviously have two different, fairly well-known leakers at this point um, claiming the same thing. So that is really good news. But basically what it is, they are saying that AMD is working on a new CPU using their 3D stack dies and not long ago we first heard about their 3d stack or uh, 2.5d but i believe also 3d stack technology the packaging technology that they call x3d which obviously sort of goes back to this name milan x i.e x3d so the interesting part here is just the fact that uh, it's really interesting because Intel has been talking about their 3D packaging technology for a little while now. AMD has clearly been working on theirs for way longer than we initially thought. This isn't just something that they're sort of working on because it looks like they're actually going to be releasing a product for it. And you can see right here that and, and they actually do mention this, I do believe somewhere I read where basically the focus isn't to bring more cores, but to heavily increase bandwidth. And we can see right here that is obviously a focus with them mentioning over 10 times the bandwidth that you get from this packaging. And obviously with the fact that AMD uh, uses multi-chip modules, bandwidth so they can communicate with each other is extremely important. This would likely get to a near point where the bandwidth is so high that you can effectively get something that's almost like a monolithic die, which is really interesting. Basically, bandwidth when we're talking multi-chip modules is incredibly important. So clearly AMD has been focusing on this for a little while and their 3D packaging tech is one way to overcome a lot of the hurdles. And next up, we have a new one from Executable Fix. If you recently saw 
one of my videos, he effectively confirmed that AM5, which is uh, going to be the next generation socket that AMD uses for their mainstream Ryzen processors, is moving to LGA. And with that, he's now showing what this Raphael, so this is uh, going to be the Zen 4. I'm not 100% sure. I'm just going to call it Ryzen 6000 for now because it does seem like the next gen is, an, is like a Ryzen 5000 XT. So this will likely be Ryzen 6000, but it may be 7000. Regardless, you can see that the pins are uh, not on the CPU like they have been. And like I said in my last video, that is a pretty big deal. But not only that, but he also confirmed that there are 28 PCI Express 4.0 lanes. If you remember, the leaker claimed that it was going to be PCI Express 4.0, not 5.0, that that was only going to be Genoa. So with that in mind, they are effectively confirming, yes, this is still PCI Express 4.0 lanes, but you are getting four more when compared to Zen 3. Not only that, but we're looking at 120 watt TDP, maybe even as high as 170. So these are probably going to be pushed really hard because remember that Zen 4 is already on five nanometers. So if they're having to use, you know, 170 watts, these things are going to be pretty beastly. Now, moving on, we have a really interesting story regarding Valve. If you remember not too long ago, I actually ran a story where Gabe Newell was responding to some uh, New Zealand high schoolers where they effectively asked what Valve was going to be doing as far as consoles. And what Gabe Newell said was that uh, you'll get a better idea of that by the end of this year. And then he went on to say, and it won't be the answer you would expect. Well, Apparently, we're now getting the answer because there appears to be some type of portable Switch-like gaming PC that's now starting to make the rounds. And as you can see right here, Ars Technica can actually state that they confirm some of this news, but not all. And when we're talking about the news itself, we can go down here and see that Steam DB operator Pavel Jundik. I do apologize if I pronounced that wrong, but they basically spotted um, a change in the Steam code, which pointed to something called Steam PAL. And what's interesting is that this is actually a follow up to another discovery where they discovered something called Neptune back in September of last year. You can see right here, September of last year, they came across Neptune optimized games. Now, at the time, they actually believed that this was some type of new controller, but the Steam Pal is something new. And what most rumors seem to suggest is that it's basically a mobile gaming PC that uses Steam, obviously, and it's going to look or at least be similar to the Switch, at least similar in the fact that you have a console on the go. But from this, it does sound like that uh, it isn't going to have the same switch like the see it right here without the removable Joy-Con controller functionality. Now, technically, that's why the Nintendo Switch is called the Switch, because you can switch from on the couch, on your TV to then a portable gaming console. This would be strictly portable, but we're talking more of the aesthetics than anything. It'll likely look something similar. And yeah, this could be really interesting. I'm not 100% sure if it's going to be primarily focusing on streaming, like from your main PC, or if this is going to be a fully functional PC in and of itself. Now, I will say it does sound like the latter, just because that would really be the only way that you could have something that is very much um, a competitor to the Nintendo Switch. Not only that, but if we're talking, uh, you know, games that are optimized specifically for this, you wouldn't really have to optimize too much to stream it, but you definitely would for kind of like a fairly souped up, but yet still portable PC. But with that said, let's move on to our final little bit. You can see right here, NVIDIA is officially teasing the upcoming announcement. You can see May 31st, 10 p.m. So this is going to be their uh, Computex event, which I will say I'm going to be covering. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to stream it just because last time I 
kind of tried to stream one of their events, NVIDIA actually sent me a copyright. So I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to be able to actually stream it this time, but if I can, I definitely will. If not, I'll still discuss it probably right after it's announced. Either way, once again, you can see this is May 31st, and while obviously this teaser effectively shows us nothing, because it was announced by NVIDIA GeForce, it's obviously some type of gaming GPU, and the reason we're pretty much 100% sure at this point, besides the fact of all the recent leaks and rumors that we've seen on the RTX 3080 Ti and 3070 Ti, and of course, they're, you know, releasing, but it'll probably be another paper launch. And with that said though, the biggest reason we know is a recent tweet that was done by uh, Aorus, and you can see that they crossed some things out. They said, guess what? Well, they kinda goofed, cause sure, they took out the obvious stuff, but they didn't take out this. Clearly a 3080 Ti, so this was their tease for that, and obviously it was a serious blunder, but we effectively already knew what was coming out. If you want to know about the release dates on that, so far what's been rumored, the 3080 Ti reviews are set to drop on June 3rd, with the actual launch on June 4th, while the 3070 Ti is going to be launching a week later on June 10th. And I do believe the reviews, at least based on rumors that we've seen, are going to be dropping a day before, so June 9th for the 3070 Ti. So yeah, with all of that said, are you excited for any of these releases or are you just kind of sick of it? And I definitely do understand those who are in the camp of being sick of it just because how can you get excited about something you know pretty much definitively you don't have a single shot to actually buy. So anyway, with all of that said, I will still be covering it. There's almost certainly gonna be some really interesting stuff, probably more from AMD than Nvidia, though at the same time, the 3080 Ti and 3070 Ti are pretty interesting, but of course, it's still likely going to be a paper launch. Anyway, if you liked the video, please subscribe, and don't forget to check out store.gamermeld.com. And as always, have a great day.